This is the Dr. Berg Show. Live from the nation's capital, it's time to get healthy, lose weight, and feel great. Call now to speak with Dr. Berg at 866-561-4292. And now, Dr. Eric Berg. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Friday morning at 11 Eastern Standard Time. We have Karen over here. She's going to be helping us out. Morning. Uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. So, hey, listen, if you want to call in, um, the number is 866-561-4292. Give us a call. I'm here for your questions. Um, we already got a lot of uh, questions already lined up, so we're just going to jump right in. Uh, we're going to go to Randy from Arizona. Go ahead, Randy. You're on the air. Uh, yes, I'm uh, 67. I've lost 26 pounds in the last eight weeks, and I'm was on two meals a day. I'm down to one. And what I'd like to find out is on supplements like your wheatgrass uh, and your cruciferous superfoods, sea kelp, and your electrolyte powder, would it interrupt uh, the intermittent fasting or autophagy? Because my results, what I want is to continue to tighten skin mm-hmm. as I lose weight. Smart. Yeah. And when is the best time to take those supplements? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Um, no, absolutely not. There's just not enough calories in the supplements to bump you out of ketosis or interfere with that at all. Um, there's certain nutrients you can take any time. Uh, the only ones that I have that you'd want to take at certain times would be if you were taking the sleep aid, you take that before bed, of course. Don't take it in the morning. Uh, also, the digestion support, digest uh, formula, which you would want to take right before the meal, and then the gallbladder right after the meal. All the other uh, supplements you can pretty much, much take a- any time, and basically it'll enhance your ability to do keto, and also, because as you're adapting and your body is using this new cellular machinery, these other nutrients are beneficial to allow it to um, uh, work better and prevent any issues. But if you're trying to tone the skin, I think you're on the right track. You do one meal a day and just tweak it with uh, some supplements and different things, I think you're gonna, do, you're gonna come out very successful, Randy. So, good question and thank you. Uh, good, so, yeah, we'll, have, oh, you have another question? Thing. Go ahead. Yeah, um, like I don't know if I'm getting anywhere near the 70% ratio on the fats. Yeah. Okay, so this is a confusing point that a lot of people have and I'm gonna be giving you more and more examples. In the, uh, books that I have as far as um, the, the new recipe uh, books on Kindle um, and on my site. Uh, most of those recipes have the perfect ratios because what we want to do is we want to take the macros of at minimally, well actually maximally 5%, five, uh, 5% carbs, okay? And then we want to add a lot of vegetables to there. So I'm redefining that chart. I'm going to actually add the vegetables in it. So stay tuned for that. 20% protein, okay? And then the rest fats. Now, when we talk about these percentages, we're talking about percent calories overall. So if you're basing, let's say, three meals on an 1800 calorie meal, you're going to have certain percentages. And for you to figure that out, it's a little complex. So right now, you can either go to my books, my website, and visualize what you need to do. But the problem is that, let's say you take a hamburger, it's composed of a certain amount of fat and protein. Like you have to add all this in with the calories and sometimes when you try to look at the grams, certain grams of certain proteins are different from other grams so it gets really confusing. Uh, I'm building a little widget so you can do it automatically, you can type in your food so it's not quite done yet but I will have that available. Um, But in the meantime, if you're trying to get more fats, go by how you feel. Like um, in the beginning, you're going to need more fats because you're not fully adapted and going without uh, enough fats, you're going to have a hard time going from one meal to the next. As you get into the keto adaptation, you don't need as much fat because the meal that you're eating is your own fat. Okay, so uh, go with uh, what you're comfortable. Don't overdo it, and then use that right now as your indicator. All right, Randy. Thanks for your question. Hey, Christina, you're from Virginia Beach. You had a question. Hi, Dr. Burke. Good morning. Hi, good God morning. bless you and Cameron and your great videos. Um, so I had a couple of questions. Um, I, um, I had a couple car accidents, um, over within like probably about a three to four year time frame of each other, really bad accidents. And, um, 
basically since those accidents and other traumatic and stressful events, um, I've had a very hard time losing weight. Um, I've been, I was put on medication off and on, but I really didn't stick to it because I knew that, like, I'm not a med person, so anytime I would take meds, it would automatically make my weight balloon. Mm -hmm. Um, and even before, even before that, I was briefly taking antidepressants and that really made me gain weight. So Mm -hmm. between the supplement, I'm sorry, between the medication I took before the accidents, um, which was about a year before the the first accident and then the accidents themselves and the latest one in 2004, at the end of 2014, I've had horrible issues, especially losing weight in my stomach. Um, I know about court, you know, you were talking about cortisol, stress and things like that. And I'm just wondering, I don't know if you can do a video on it or I've just been doing research and like, they're saying that there's like kind of like the link between um, issues with weight loss versus, um, you know, accidents and trauma and PTSD, right. things like that. So I'm just trying to get a, a scope on that. Yeah. Hey, and, um, question question yeah. I have. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have inflammation in your body? Like, are you talking about like bloating kind of? No, like just, pain. Um, pain in, in any part of your body. Um, occasionally, yes. Okay. Do you have sleeping um, yeah, problems? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do you have sleeping problems? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, so, definitely. So <clears throat> you brought up a really good point, Christina. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you have the book. But if you don't have it, you should get it. I have a chapter and they're just on this one thing called stress. Um, the couple things you need to know. All stress accumulates. Your body is like a sponge. It holds stress over time. I'm talking about um, all types of stress. And then physical injury is one big uh, stress. I have done a lot of videos on injuries. You can look them up on YouTube um, and watch them. I show great techniques because I ran into this a lot when I was uh, doing in practice. Where, like these people come in with these severe accidents, <clears throat> I'm talking severe, and then I would have to work with them because they're not sleeping, because they're trying to go to sleep, but their body's still a little bit stuck in the injury. It won't just turn off. So we're dealing with uh, physical trauma, and we're dealing with the adrenal. What you need to do is watch my videos on the adrenal gland. There's a technique that I show you. Uh, there's seven different areas of your body, including the areas on the adrenal that you can tap in to do acupressure to release that stress. That's gonna allow you to go to sleep at night. So then you'll start to really heal. The way to heal the adrenal is by getting you to sleep. So you have to fix the sleep, and that's the stress. So you remove the stress, sleep, and then the adrenal gets better. There's a couple supplements that you're gonna probably, no, actually there's gonna be one that I think would be good for you. It's uh, the adrenal and cortisol relief. Uh, If you take that, that will help, and probably actually the sleep aid. Both of those together will help you from a nutrition angle, but, but you're right. I think the old stress is keeping you from losing weight. So once you fix the sleep, I think that's going to like open the door for allowing you to uh, finally lose the weight. But I have a ton of videos on that. Thanks, Christina. All right, we're going to Karen. Okay, hi. So first, uh, I just want to say good morning to everybody. And we have some cool people checking in with us this morning from... Um, Somalia, Qatar, Puerto Rico, wow. Minnesota, Colorado, all over the U.S., of course. We have Panama, Algeria, Israel. And so we just want to say welcome, and this is really cool that we're all able to connect up here and get some, some great information on health and keto. So, um, yeah, the first, que- the first question I have is from Frances, who's on Facebook. And I think she, <clears throat> she brings a question that we hear all the time, and I think I would, I would say it's a myth. Her question is, why would some people, why would keto work for some people and not work for other people? Good question. Well, is that a myth? Would you say that's a myth? No, I don't that think idea I, that it works no. for some people and not other no. people. No, I think it'll work for some people and not other people. Really? I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Um, I just released a video on this. Um, and by the way, um, we have a um, private. It's a closed group on Facebook. Keto uh, Intermittent Fasting Lab. And there's a lot of questions going on. 90% of every single question, I have a video on it. And I think what happens is uh, people, it's maybe hard to find the video. So when you go to YouTube, in the search bar, just go Dr. Berg and then type in the subject. You will find it. Okay? You'll find the video. But... I think... um, Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, I was going to say. We so, had a slight camera issue there for a second. So here's the, here's the big situation. Um, I think 
keto will not work without intermittent fasting. It works on some people if they have a good metabolism, but if your metabolism is slow, you do keto and having snacks, it's not going to work. Mm. And um, I mean, recently, I'm just going to be totally brutally honest. Not brutally. I'm just going to be totally honest. Brutally with you. honest. No, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, um, <clears throat> someone commented, wow, Dr. Berg, I saw in your early videos, you had a little bit of a gut going on, right? We call that, in our house, we call that the pizza crust. So, yes, I did. And that was, I was following my own advice. And this was a while ago. Years ago. In my book, The Seven Principles of Fat Burning, um, I allowed people to do snacking between the meals. And so, um, at that time, I was probably 210 pounds. Um, and... Actually, about 211 pounds, okay? A was it pure 10 muscle. Or, was it 10 or 11? It's 11 pounds. And oh, I was a pure right. muscle. Let's just get it on the line. About 2% fat, body fat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> there, I, was, uh, I had a little bit of a gut going on. That, uh, so anyway, what happened, um, I was eating the same food back then as I'm eating now with a couple, well, not the same, slightly different. Um, what's different now is that I'm no longer doing what I normally did was I would have a mid-afternoon snack. I would have an apple and peanut butter. I love those apples and peanuts. So I would have, put the peanut butter on the apple, boom. And other than that, I was doing the nuts at night. At night, a lot so of grazing. So I would graze on nuts, okay? That, everything else, I was doing the massive salad. I was doing the, everything else with the eggs. So everything, the thing that I change now is I cut out the snacks and I'm doing actually two meals but everything else is the same. So um, now I'm 185, my high school weight. And so, you know, I'm totally willing to be uh, wrong when it comes to that. I actually gave false information back then. So that's why this Dr. book Berg, is upgraded. We are gonna forgive you on that. I think that's the thing a lot of people yeah. like about you is when you find that something isn't workable. Um, you know, I'm the first one to tell you, let's change it. One. I'm not going to hold on to some, some fixed idea. I'm not trying to defend it. If something works better, I'm like all over it. So um, getting back to the question, keto um, does work with intermittent fasting. But if you're basing this on your weight loss, you're gonna, you're gonna not, it's not going to be 100% because your inches on your waist is going to shrink. It's going to shrink if you're doing this right. And some people really need to go to one meal a day if they're really slow metabolism. Okay? Are you talking about me again? N not really, no. Um, but the point is that you want to do what, um, you want to start out with three and then two and then one meal. Do it slowly. But, um, that, that, but I am a good example of that. I just happen to be an example of that. You are an example. You need like, to do a little bit stricter intermittent fasting. Right. And um, it's not the scale. It's the size. Especially if you had over um, seven kids. <laughs> um, so that's the situation. I didn't have over seven kids. Well, three. That you know of. Three, right. Right. Okay. Um, so the point is that it, it will work for most people if, on keto, but some people won't. You've got to add the intermittent fasting. All right? So let's go back to... Um, Did I only get these, one question? You got one question because got, it was a long question. That was a lot. That so now we're going to go to New Jersey. Um, Purvey, I remember this guy. Um, you, you're from New Jersey. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, Dr. Berg. Um, oh, hi. Last time I, uh, yeah, I tried to reach out last week, but I can, you could not hear me. Okay. But um, uh, the question which I have is I suffer from um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. I'm okay. on pres prescription medication for both of them. And I am doing keto since November 27th. The amount of weight I've lost is just four or five pounds, and inches like eight or nine. But now I've started doing IF uh, on 24-hour fasting, but I don't see any results from last two weeks. And I don't know. So my question is, I know that you've been explaining this and talking. I was listening to the previous callers, too. That is keto for everybody or is something which I'm not doing right. I went yeah. to the doctor and I explained everything to them that this is what I'm doing. So he said, just continue what you're doing, but you need to see a um, um, gastroenterologist to see why, what's the problem, why you're not losing weight. Right. Okay. So let me answer that, okay? The first thing I'm going to tell you, it's in this little book like right here. There's a lot of people trying to do keto, but they don't have all the details. I wish it would be so simple that, here, eat this and you're going to lose weight. But a lot of people come with a lot of other issues, like you have fibromyalgia, you have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, being in practice for 29 years, um, 
I ran into a lot of cases like this. I mean, you have all the other issues that are preventing you from losing weight. This book goes into the other issues. I have all the other body issues, including inflammation, stress, pain. You should probably study it because it will give you some answers. For example, if you have a low-grade inflammation or this inflammatory conditions or autoimmune, you're going to have to focus on that to be able to uh, get rid of that barrier so you can go fast. So there's so I would study my videos on autoimmune, read the book, watch the videos on fibromyalgia, and then get rid of that inflammation, and then watch what happens. I think, you're, I think it's working for you, but it's just slow right now. Also, I'm not sure if you're doing one meal a day, you might want to consider doing that to work up to that, in addition to all the other things we talked about. Um, but it's so funny, because I'll have some people say, well, keto's not right for me. Okay, go back to the carbs. Let's see what happens then. Like, it's, there's one thing that controls um, met, uh, your metabolism and also your weight loss. It's the amount of carbohydrates and insulin. So that's really the stable information that you need to wrap your wits around and understand fully to really nip this in the butt. Thanks, bud. for, thanks for calling. <laughs> you nip it in the bud. Yeah. So, Karen, uh, we're going to go right to you. Go ahead. Okay, good. So, a um, few questions here. On YouTube, we have Reggie. He works from 12 midnight until 8 in the morning. So he has a question about when to do the intermittent fasting. What do you do when you're on a midnight schedule? Well, you know, I actually did create a video on that, but I didn't release it yet. Mm. Um, but I think that what I would do is your whole, your whole circadian rhythm is shifted. Okay, so just go ahead and shift the meals to align with that. The problem is that on the days off, you may have to sort of keep that same schedule. The worst thing about uh, shift work is the rotational shifts, which just totally destroy the adrenal. And you have to be pretty young and healthy to handle the rotational shifts. So if you're going to do it, keep something really consistent and then just match the meal. So if you're getting up at 9 o'clock at night, that's when you have your you know, you, then you basically wait for your first meal, which would normally be, you know, several hours later, and then do one more meal. So you just adapt to, um, you know, when you sleep. All right? Okay, you got another qu I question? I do. I do. Go ahead. Uh, there's a question here. I have two more. Uh, can supplements, can any number of supplements, cruciferous, wheatgrass, anything, replace the need to eat the vegetables? Well, I think the supplements will enhance that okay it's going to enhance it definitely it's going to improve it um you, but. because you you want to eat for nutrients right so you're going to enhance it but i would not use it as a complete substitute you're going to have to bite the bullet and eat the vegetables i'm sorry you're going to have to start chewing it it's so easy to sit down and eat grain products like the doughy bread and the crust it's so easy because it's not much chewing you put it in your mouth it dissolves and it just goes right in but to sit there and con chew a huge salad takes a lot of jaw muscles and it's like work and so but you have to build up to it I'm not actually have to build it's like working out it you is. have to build this actually there's there's so much truth to that but I'll tell you I had a friend once who who turned me on to these like salad scissors mm -hmm. and I have to tell you that changed things for me completely I know it sounds goofy but where Dr. Berg could sit and eat a huge kale salad and just chew through that I could not do it as a matter of fact before we started promoting kale shakes I was putting kale in the blender because I couldn't chew that much um, now I do the kale shakes and I use the salad scissors and it makes such a difference it puts things nice and small and I don't know you may want to try that out or get someone to chew it for you and then uh, <laughs> like the bird yeah good so we're gonna go to uh, Shana from Atlanta <laughs> go ahead you're on the air Hi, Dr. Bird. Hi. Hey, Mrs. Bird. Hi. <laughs> I was calling y'all. First of all, I love y'all so much. I was calling because uh, Dr. Oz, because of you, I have, I mean, Dr. Oz, Dr. Bird, because of you, I have lost 51 pounds wow. in six months. But awesome. Ding, ding, yeah, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for everything that you do. But I have a few issues. I really haven't lost any weight, uh, major weight, since um, October. 
And um, so, like, I lost, like, eight pounds from October to uh, January. I have been eating strict keto. I have not. I have not cheated at all. I did everything you most. I did everything you told me to do. I eat no bread, no none of that. The second thing is, um, I have a. I, I I suffer with PTSD, depression, and and anxiety and paranoia because of my mother's death. She had died a horrific death. So I have to live a guarded life. Like I can't hear anything about death. I can't go anywhere. To a funeral home, I can't. I have to watch what I look at on TV and all of that. So I said all that to say I can't sleep at night. Mm-hmm. I have all of your, I have your adrenal uh, and cortisol support. I have the sleep aid, so I get to sleep, uh, Dr. Berg. But this is what happens: my heart wakes me up, and I start screaming at night. Okay. I wake up screaming, panic, and also the last thing. I have a strong burning sensation on my left side. It, you, at first, three years ago, it was like a strong vibration. Then it went numb. Now it's a, a severe burning sensation. Okay. And I just, I mean, I, I take my vitamins. I eat right. Um, I don't work out, though, because I did all this without working out. But I really, really need help. So I have a question. Um, are you taking the nutritional yeast at all? No, I okay. gotta get the nutrition. Okay, so let me let me explain what's going on. This is a really another really good, per, uh, perfect question. I love it. Um, you're describing an, another situation uh, that I want to tell you about, and then I want to give you a little twist to it because um, you know here you lost weight and now you're plateauing. Um, your sleep is an issue. You have this terrible loss that now your body is uh, reacting to that. It's you know, it affects your sleep and your pulse rate and the whole thing. Um, there's one remedy for nightmares and burning sensation anywhere in your body that seems to work. And it's basically um, B vitamins, specifically B1. That's really, really going to help you a lot. Um, I would get um, the nutritional yeast. You can get it in a powder. I have it in a tablet form. It's easier. You can actually... Um, swallow or cut them in half and chew them. You're probably going to need six a day, even some before bed. You need a lot of nutritional yeast right now. You're going to find that's going to help you tremendously with your stress, but I think that's what you're missing. And then you needed to go for a long walks. If there's pictures of your mom in the house, just take them, put them in a box right now. You just don't want any reminders right now. You just need space going for long walks, and um, that's going to be your exercise right now. Now, the other thing is that I had one guy I met over the weekend, he lost 50 pounds, and then he lost also six, no, 10 inches off of, his, off of his waist, but then he gained 10 pounds, but the inches maintained. So in other words, he didn't, he, he didn't increase in size. That means that he, he built more muscle mass. So that could be happening with you too. You could be shrinking, but just the waist not coming off. But do those things I told you, and uh, I promise it's going to actually really, really help you. Okay. Now, one thing I want to uh, mention, we have several uh, quizzes we're going to throw out today. We're out without this hour, we're going to give you, and we're going to, basically, I'm going to ask you a question right now and see if you can get it right. This is the true or false question, okay? I'm going to ask you, and then you're going to type in your answer, and then we're going to see if you're correct, all right? True or false, eating high fats will lead to gallstones. Okay, go ahead and answer. And then I'm going to come back to that answer. And then after that, we have several more throughout the uh, mm-hmm. hour. All right. So Amanda has been holding for 53 minutes and 43 seconds for Michigan. Go ahead, Amanda. Hi, yes. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have three parts and then my final uh question um starting off i do i had pcos the polycystic ovarian syndrome i had lots of uh fertility issues um i would have miscarried if my doctor didn't give me progesterone pills to hold my pregnancies that i did have um i've always had bloating and digest uh burping digestion like issues um after my son i did call you once before and talk to you (laughs) Um, my hair was falling out like seven months after my son and, and it was really freaky. 
And I took started taking your wheatgrass, which that cleared it up. My hair stopped falling out. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never had menstrual cycles on my own. And um, when I was heavy, I did carry my weight like in my face and all over my body. This is my second one. Um, I started keto three months ago. I lost 33 pounds, okay. which was easy. And that's with no exercise. My goal was to reverse the PCOS and lower my anxiety, mm-hmm. which I did the PCOS part. Okay. But, um, and my joint pain went down. My knees, ankles stopped hurting. I started my own mens- menstrual cycles and less headaches. Um, two months into keto, I noticed um, ridges on my tongue. I've never had that before. And I got um, my... OBGYN wanted to get blood work from me to check my PCOS status. Everything came back normal. Mm -hmm. All my hormones came back normal. A week to a week and a half after that, um, my hands and feet started turning yellow and orange. And my skin is like an olivey, greeny yellow. And um, I noticed um, on my third menstrual cycle that I had on keto uh, was extremely heavy Okay. And I started getting very bad after that, very bad, like fatigue around the 7.30, p.m. mark to where I'd just pass out after putting my kids to bed. And I noticed like shortness in breath, colder hands and feet, dryness. So, Amanda, I have a um, question. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so just because there's a lot of calls and this this question probably yeah. I could spend an hour dissecting this. This is a big problem. Okay. So let me just give you a couple tips. OK. Um, OK. I just have one question. Is, do you have the scallops on the tongue on the outside or split down the center? Um, I, I noticed on the outside, and I have a okay. very faint one in the center. Okay. All right. So number one, um, this is in my book where you have the scallops on the outside of the tongue. That's usually thyroid. <clears throat> so you gave me a lot of good data. Like the PCOS is really coming from high levels of insulin. So you're on the keto. I'm guessing you're on the intermittent fasting. That should eventually help that. There's a lot of other things you can do to... Uh, reduce insulin on my videos. So you want to continue that. That's going to help that. Also, you um, sounds like you had high estrogen. So right there, um, I think seek help would be the, the key with that to help you kind of balance your hormones. But the fact that you had bloating tells me that there's something with the liver and the gallbladder because you also had yellow and orange, you know, hands, feet. That's all, that's all liver and gallbladder. So apparently, the thyroid works through that area. So there's something going on with the liver and the gallbladder. So I would just, I would spend some time maybe getting some evaluations just to make sure that's, everything's cool, but really increasing your vegetables just a ton, ton more, and that should clean that up. Make sure you're not constipated, make sure things are flowing, and refocus your energy on the liver. I think that's kind of the missing piece to everything right now, and I think it'll take you to the next level. Thanks so much, Amanda. All right. Karen, what do we have for answers? Uh, no questions. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> true or I false? have all the what answers, we but... What, what oh, do you think? the true and false? True okay, and false. Okay, because we've moved beyond here in the world of social media. But when those answers were coming in, the vast majority of people in both Facebook and YouTube said false. I would say uh, every 10 or 12 answers, there would be one person that said yes. Okay. Okay, for all, the, all of you that said it's false, you are... Correct. Yay. Yeah. So um, this is what's interesting about the gallbladder. You know, people love this other idea that fats cause stones. Actually, a low-fat diet causes gallstones. Mm. Low-fat diets. Why? Because saturated fats stimulate bile production. Bile keeps the stones gone. Stones come from lack of bile. B-I-L-E. So adding more fats will help you. However, if you're doing a lot of nuts and things, it could overload and irritate the gallbladder, but it doesn't cause stones. Okay? So now, I have one more question related to that because we're on the same topic. Okay. What is the absolute best food? We're not talking about saturated fats, okay? We're talking, let's pretend you're a vegetarian. What's what's the best non-animal food to increase bile production, and support the gallbladder and reduce stones. All right? The best non-animal yeah. food. Yeah, like a, a vegetarian-type food that will help with your gallbladder. OK, 
Okay, what's the top food? Type it down. I'm going to continue on. We're going to answer that in a little bit. Okay, good. Okay? Are you coming over to me? I'm in a second. I have someone that's been on the on, online for an hour. Okay. Ellen, you're from Utah. Go ahead. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Um, I am a recent follower. I really appreciate all the information that you're that you're giving us. I appreciate sure. it. So, um, so from um, April until November, I lost seventy pounds doing HCG. Wow. Yeah, um, I feel great. Um, I'm 52, uh, postmenopausal, and um, so I started working out recently. Um, I've been gaining weight, and I'm doing the. Um, I have the scale that's got the body fat analysis, and um, so I'm I'm gaining weight. It's not muscle. Um, it's it, according to my scale. It is. Um, it's water and fat, um, and I haven't gained a ton. It's only six pounds, but. I don't want to go backwards. Right. So, um, and so I am doing the keto. Um, I've increased my vegetables over the last um, couple of weeks to see if it would help, and um, it's not really helping. So you, I are, wanted to get some. Are, are you doing any uh, intermittent fasting? I am not. Okay. Um, is your stomach getting bigger or smaller? Um, bigger. Okay. This is really simple, Ellen. This is very simple. Okay. You ready? Are you sitting down for this? <laughs> okay. It's, the thing with the HCG diet, it's a very low calorie diet. It does yeah. slow your metabolism down. That's what probably you're ending up right now. Like, what's going on? I should be, you know, this should work. Well, keto without intermittent fasting for someone like you is probably not going to help you. You're going to have to add the intermittent fasting. Absolutely. Okay. Just do three meals, no snacks. Do that for a while. And then go down to two. I have a video. Just, in fact, if you just go to YouTube and type intermittent fasting, mine's the first video. You should watch that, apply it, and I promise you, it'll crack through this case. Your metabolism will eventually come back, and you will lose the weight. Okay? I'll give you that in writing okay. as a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> so what about, um, what about with working out? I'm doing um, mm -hmm. really heavy duty working, you know, um, circuit training, I'm going to start running. Do I need the extra protein throughout the day? No, you don't. No, you don't. Watch that video too. Um, if okay. you go too much protein, you're going to increase insulin. All you're going to need, all your body okay. can really handle is a certain amount. And as you do intermittent fasting, okay. the need for that is less. And you'll learn okay. about that in the videos. So, no, the more protein will probably slow you down. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks so much, Ellen. Ellen. Okay, Karen. Over to you. Okay, so first you want the answer, what everybody's not giving? Not yet. Uh, oh, not yet. Okay, go ahead. Give it to me. Well, Karen. I think so, because these guys, again, are already off onto other questions. So okay. I would say the vast majority of people on Facebook are saying avocado. There are uh, some other miscellaneous answers. On YouTube, there's a lot of different answers, uh, including Fritos which I'm pretty sure was a joke. Oh, I'm sure that will increase your bile. But, <laughs> but uh, there were a lot of different answers from butter and beet and cabbage and veg different vegetables to avocado and coconut oil, MCTs, different things like that. So okay. it's kind of all over the map. Okay, so you're all wrong. No, <laughs> um, now, here's, here's the number one uh, vegetable that will increase your bile production. You ready for this? Drum roll, please. Oh. Okay. The artichoke. Really? Yeah. yeah. Artichoke is very a potent bile releaser. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure all of you eat a lot of artichokes. I wish I liked artichokes. It's kind of like um, people don't really even eat them very much. I mean, right. okay. Number two, there's more. Oh. Uh, beet leaves. Very powerful. Put them in your salad. Uh, I think someone said that. Yeah. You can do beets as well. Yeah. Um, and because of the fiber, it, it's going to be okay for most people. Shave them. I mean, it's hard to eat a lot of beets raw, isn't it, Karen? Like in one sitting. A because raw it's... beet or a beet leaf? No, I'm talking about a beet. Yeah. I mean, so it depends can... on salads, if shaved you on shave salads. It and try, right. to eat, try to eat a whole beet raw. That's See a lot of beet. See where that gets you. Right. It's just really kind of tough and rough. Now, what okay. about roasted? If they're roasted, I could eat. Yeah, you can tons do some roasted, beet. but they're tend to high in sugar. You want to you mm. kind of shave them on your salad raw. Number three, Karen. Yeah. The radish. <gasps> Radishes help. Release I the love bile. Radishes. Because it's like the liver and the gallbladder, I mean, it's 
you're, it's going to increase bioproduction. And the last thing, lemons. Okay, lemons. So that will also all increase your bioproduction, but the artichoke is number one. Okay? okay so good. now uh, I have two more questions that are coming up shortly, so stay tuned. Do not leave this channel. Okay, um, good. Karen, did you want to ask a quick question before I go to John? No, I'm going to ask several very long questions because all right, social media guys here are, are wait. Do we have a camera? We're good? Okay, good. So, first of all, I have to give a shout out to Austria, Wales, England, Italy, Germany, South Korea. You guys rock. Thanks for joining us. Um, and all over the United States, of course. I can't sing the 50, to, the 50 Nifty United States song, but I know you're all here and thanks for coming. Okay, good. So I have a question about uh, a fatty liver and the keto diet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, when you do keto and you actually cut your carbs down, you're going to be dumping a lot of fat from the fat cells. It's going to release a lot of fat and cholesterol. So if you don't consume the quantity of vegetables, you're going to end up with a fatty liver. Mm. Um, and, and you're going to actually realize the toxins are in the fat. So you could end up with like a rash or a skin issue or um, like weird smell coming out of your skin, uh, odor, all that stuff. So thus increase vegetables, okay, and salad at the meal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the scissors. Yeah. Get the scissors. Okay, also, um, oh, no, I did want to say too because I know there's so many questions coming in. There's so many callers. There's so many people on social media. Don't forget that on both Facebook, under videos, and on YouTube, you can go in on YouTube, Dr. Berg, whatever uh, your question is, and there will be a video on that. So your only help is not just on this, this one hour. Uh, yeah, and, and use that. In fact, there's a summary sheet that you can go to. Summary. Click the link down below and go right to Messenger and download this summary. This is every single video I've done on keto and intermittent fasting. There's a lot of videos. And I'm telling you, all the questions that everyone's asking, yeah. I already did the video. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. what's this next question? Karen? Okay, good. So, uh, what's your take on carb blockers? You love them. <laughs> yeah, carb blockers. There's certain <laughs> supplements out there that block your carb or act, um, or act as a sponge in your gut to prevent you from eating. Um, I'm, I don't like that. It's just kind of like trying to do a bypass in the, on the normal body and it comes with a package. Um, there's certain enzymes that help dissolve. These are all little things that don't make a lot of difference. Um, I think they're a waste of your time. Okay, next question. Wow, that was really, that was really A to B. That's right. So a couple of questions coming in. I wake up in the middle of the night. I can't fall asleep. Insomnia. Go. Well, if, you, if the keto and, and intermittent fasting affects your sleep, what that means is that your, your body probably needs more minerals. I would take calcium before bed, magnesium before bed. Start adding that to the mix. Um, you can also try adding more B vitamins, but I think it's going to be the minerals. And then if that doesn't work, um, what happens is <clears throat> when you're burning fat, it has more than double the amount of potential energy. So you're getting this, you're actually souping up your car to like a, uh, a more powerful engine, okay? So it's going to generate more energy. So you're, you're going to have to exercise to get the energy out. It's a new concept for some people, but the point is that you want to get the energy <laughs> why, out by exercising. Why do you look at No, I was looking over there. I was at looking, the you're working out hardcore. So I am working out hardcore. So what happens is like you have this energy, so you have to get it out of your body. Um, and then I also would recommend my sleep aid um, because that really, you take one before bed, um, you're out. I take it every night, okay? So I'm going to go to John. John, you've been waiting patiently for a bit. Go ahead. You're from upstate. Yes. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, my question is, well, I'll, I'll set it up this way. I've been doing uh, intermittent fasting and uh, the keto diet since uh, mid-November, and happily, I'm down 35 pounds. But I've, um, I haven't tested myself, tested myself if... I'm actually in ketosis. Um, I'm a type two diabetic, and um, my my readings are fine while I'm eating. But if I try to exercise, I get because I have three herniations in my lower back. My blood sugar will spike to over two hundred. What's what's in your back? Exercise. What's in your back? Uh, I've had three herniations. Oh, hernia. Okay. Is it the pain that 
Is, do you, does it put yeah, you in pain? Right. Okay. And, and, and even if I did an exercise, let's say today I haven't, I've yet to go to the gym, um, just sitting around and I, I had an omelet with bacon in it for breakfast, that's not going to raise my blood sugar. But, you know, just doing things around the house, I just tested my blood sugar and it was 217. But my back is hurting. Yeah. And my, my, I guess my real question is, is, is it possible to reach ketosis if I'm getting these non-nutritional um, insulin spikes? Good question. Um, I'm going to do a video on this, John, because there's a lot of other things that can raise your blood sugars. I think the adrenals from the pain is going to release a lot of glucose from the system. That's probably what's happening. So uh, two things. Um, watch my video on low back pain. Uh, and do the acupressure on that. You're going to work on the front part of your abdomen down by the belly button. That should at least give you some relief. The other thing I would recommend is manganese for disc problems, okay? If that doesn't give you significant results, I would honestly look into stem cell um, therapy. It's awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. So I'm going to be doing a video on that, but I think that would actually be the icing on the cake for you. I'm sorry. Um, I shouldn't talk about ice cream today. <laughs> but that's really what you need because that's what's causing it. But I will do a video on that specifically, but I think it's coming from your adrenals and the pain. Um, and you're going to have to probably just do walks right now so you don't aggravate the lower back and start adding more intermittent fasting and then the blood sugars should start coming back uh, to normal. Thanks, John. Um, John. Another John from Illinois has been waiting for an hour. Go ahead, John. Hi, Dr. Berg. Um, Hi. I was wondering about I have uh, hemochromatosis, mm -hmm. where it's a hereditary thing, excess iron. Yeah. And um, I've found, like, mixed reviews about, um, you know, increasing, like, kale and vegetables and stuff that are high in iron. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering if you've run across anybody that has this that's done keto and if it's helped or made it worse or... Good question. Um, this is a... Um, I'm going to do a... I'm going to actually do another video on this because it's, it's actually pretty, it's not as uncommon as you might think. Um, the general therapy is to basically go and get your blood taken, your blood removed. Um, um, what do you call that, Karen? What, I'm sorry, I was reading. It's called, uh, it's called um, bloodletting. Yeah. Oh. yeah, just taking your blood up. Basically, <laughs> that's going to actually reduce your iron and make you probably feel really good. But you're right, if you take, especially spinach, uh, that could be a problem. I, so, I realize I need to, to pay attention to you every, a little more often. Yeah, because I was just not trying get... to, I saw you not paying attention to my... I'm paying attention to <laughs> no, my I'm people. Um, but John, um, there's a couple other things you can do. Um, you're probably going to have to take something called a chelator. A natural chelator is, uh, the derivation comes from the Latin, which means claw. So it comes in there and tends to pull out certain heavy um, minerals. Uh, Curcumin is a really good chelator for iron. You can take more of that. And there's also chlorella is another one. So in the meantime, go donate your blood and do these other things, okay? And I think that should help you. But I'll, I'll do a complete video on that. All right, we're going to Karen. Okay, good. All right, a few more uh, locations here. Hello to Greece, New Zealand, and Dallas. Dallas in the house. Okay, good. <laughs> So I, I have actually three, so you have to hang with me. The first two can be quick. What's your thought on colostrum? And some people may not know what that is, but... Colostrum is kind of like the first milk that um, comes from either breast milk or even a cow's milk. It has amazing property, immune properties. It's, it's like taking a natural without side effects version of human growth hormone, um, which is the anti-aging. But... Mainly people are taking it for their immune system to repair a damaged immune system. I highly recommend it. If you get a high quality grass-fed um, colostrum, it would be really good for people with immune deficiency issues, especially if you had a history of like steroids and you, you get sick a lot. You start taking that, you take a very small amount right before bed in some water and slowly increase it to probably a teaspoon because it can like a detox reaction, but it's one of the best things to repair an uh, immune system. And that won't knock you out of ketosis? Oh, no, not at all. Okay. Okay, cool. Now, second, very quick, will the sleep aid, can someone become dependent on the sleep aid? Well, not in a bad way. It's not addicting. It just, it works <laughs> so well, and you just keep taking it because it, it helps you. Because the sleep aid is not a sleep 
treatment. It's basically something to relax the stress in the body. It relaxes the adrenal stress, so it allows you to go to sleep easier. Mm. So it doesn't like, it's not like a drug, it doesn't have melatonin, it doesn't have valerian root, it's not addictive. It just not a hormone. makes you feel, no, it just, it's a natural thing that helps reduce stress so you can go to sleep. I mean, most people live a stressful life. It's hard to go through a day without stress, so you're going to have to constantly extract that somehow. Um, so, yeah. Okay, Karen, we are uh, ready for the next question. Okay. Oh, there's you two mean more, from you. There's two more questions, okay. okay, and one's going to be right now, and then the one's going to be right at the end, so you have to stay tuned. So this question, Karen, <laughs> yeah. is what is the best food to feed your gut bacteria, your friendly bacteria? This is good because someone had a question about this earlier. Good. Okay. We can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. So right. what is the best food to feed your friendly bacteria? Go ahead and type it in below. We'll okay, come back to that question in a couple minutes, okay? I need to go to India uh, from Udit. Go ahead, you're on the air. So uh, I had this question that typically <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, people who suggest a ketogenic diet, uh, but when it comes to Indian food, you know, you're not able to find the right mix, the right composition, because the Indian diet is a very high carbohydrate diet. Yeah. So one needs to follow <clears throat> your diet or let's say, you know, anybody's ketogenic diet. What is the way out? How should one go about that uh, when it comes to Indian food? Right. Let me ask you a question. Um, are you trying to lose weight or do you have more of a blood sugar issue? No, I, I'm trying to lose weight. Okay. Good question. So um, I want to just say something first before I tell you what to eat. Um, there's a lot of people from India that actually are doing this very successfully. Um, but if you're not interested in weight and let's say you want to improve your diabetes, as a transition from diabetes to non-diabetes, there's a couple things that I would highly, highly recommend if you're from India or whatever. Um, and, I'm just, and I'm not even recommending this, but I'm just going to tell you it probably would help bring your sugars down. Instead of consuming, you, you, what you're going to have to do is like completely get rid of any type of processed sugar in grains and in wheat, but if you went to um, like mangoes, if you went to berries, if you went to fruit, chances are your blood sugars would do much, much better, okay? Now, I'm just letting you know as a transition, like if you have kids, for example, and they just can't do this, give them the fruit, it'll actually make things better for blood sugar, especially if you actually uh, have sugar or the artificial sweeteners versus fruit. Do the fruit, okay? But for you wanting to lose weight and getting the keto and ketosis, um, there's, I don't know if you guys have kale there, but you could actually check, but I know there's a lot of other vegetables that you can do. So you want to have a lot of green raw vegetables. When I, I've never been to India. I've been to Indian restaurants in America. They're probably a lot different. Um, but they tend to use a lot of sugar in the sauces and a lot of cooked vegetables, especially the spinach. Like, it's pretty much completely cooked to death. So you want to do raw vegetables, number one. You want to do coconut oil. You want to cook with it. You want to consume it. You can do ghee. I think they also have cheese. I think there's also animal products like beef and chicken. You can do that. Um, so right there, you can do it. The problem is that you have all the rice. There's so much rice. So you're going to have to get out the rice, you get rid of the rice and get rid of the bread and the grains. Those are the two killers. So that's what I would recommend. Um, try that. And I'm going to also have some of the clients that we have from India maybe give a list and I'll actually put that together in a, a PDF so I can kind of target different countries as far as with the different cultures of what alternative foods that you can consume. All right, thanks for your question. All right, Karen, do we have a quick question? Okay, we have a quick question. Do you want the answers that yes, have been pouring in? Yes, I do want in? the answer first. Okay, but you have to come back to me then so I can get some of those will. questions. I will. Okay, and before I do any of that, I, I have to give another shout out because we're missing countries all over the place here, including uh, Australia, Thailand, Sweden, the Philippines, South Africa, Nigeria, uh, and then more of the U.S., of course, California, New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama. Uh, wow. 
It's awesome. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Okay, so the answers that are coming in for, can you repeat the questions so people, if they're just yeah, showing Yeah, so up? what's the best food for the friendly bacteria? Okay, so the main answers I'm getting are yogurt, fermented foods like kimchi, and someone, which I thought was interesting, wrote fiber. Okay. Is there a right answer in there? Do I have a drum roll, please? Drum roll. <laughs> I love the drum roll. Okay, good. <laughs> now, when you actually recommend, uh, what you're recommending, like you're recommending like for uh, fermented products, that's actually you're adding bacteria. Microbes don't eat bacteria. That will mm. replace the bacteria. The food for the microbes is the fiber. <gasps> so wow. that individual was totally correct. That one yeah. person on YouTube, maybe it was more than one. I'm sorry, but, but well, we want to. I want to tell awesome. you the number one fiber is artich Drum roll. artichoke. <laughs> Never artichoke. Mind. That's number one. Artichoke. So we can actually kill two birds with one stone with the our artichoke. artichoke is really coming artichoke up. Artichoke is good for the bod, um, bile. bile, and it's also good for the microbes. These microbes eat the fiber. And number two would be chicory root. Okay. Number three would be leek <clears throat> and asparagus. Okay. I love grilled leek. Can you grill it? You have to eat it raw. You can grill it. Okay, good. Um, just don't kill it too much with the heat. But the point is that these grill fibers from the vegetables it. will feed your microbes. Cruciferous will do it as well. So when you get constipated when eating too much salad, that means that you're overwhelming the microbes. They're like they're not used to that. So you have to gradually ease into this. But um, that's how you feed the microbes. If you want more microbes, you take the fermented foods, the kimchi. But the kimchi will also give you fiber too because it's a vegetable. Mm -hmm. It's cabbage. So I think. I think what we have to do, if you guys are in the uh, the lab in the closed group, uh, maybe put some. Um, Artichoke recipes. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think that's great. I don't have a lot of artichoke recipes. I mean, I... But do you I, have a question? Oh, from the guys? Yeah. <laughs> you, you thought I was just going to start chatting? Yeah. I was. Okay. Another day. I'll keep you on track. Okay, good. Um, no. No, I'm sure I can come up with one okay, here. We've so been doing you, a lot of other things. Why you think of it? No, no, no. Let me... No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay. Um... Okay, you go ahead and I'll come. Okay, so this is from Cynthia from California. Go ahead, <laughs> Cynthia. You're on the air. Good morning, Berg. Good hey. morning. How are you guys? I love you guys. You're my favorite YouTubers. Ah, oh, we love you too. Thanks, Cynthia. Thank you. Okay, so I have two questions real quick. Um, I'm type 2 diabetes. I have type 2 diabetes, sorry. And I've lost way too much weight. I went under a hundred pounds and I was staying off the scale like you suggested and I put on my size zero pants and they kind of like fell off and I'm like, uh oh. So I got on the scale and I was uh ninety nine point five mm -hmm. and I need to know how to gain more weight while on keto because right. of the type diabetes. Do you have type one? So I'm type 2. Are you taking insulin? No, I'm on, um, I can't remember the name. They just switched me, but I take the pills. Okay. And has your blood sugars improved since you've been on this? You know what? They fluctuate uh, super bad. Um, I've had, I was eating those protein bars from Kirkland, and I found out that it had, um, uh, tapioca starch in it and yeah. it just really threw me off mm. and ever since then I've been having such a hard time getting it back under control because I was you know at 78 most times and it was really good and okay. ever since I started that uh, it just kind of blew out of proportion and then my second question was is I've been sharing your bread recipe on your uh, IF page, yeah. and everybody's freaking out over the um, arrowroot, yeah. so, you know, because okay. it has so many carbs. Yeah, good question. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I just have another question for you. Um, okay. Are your blood sugars going above 100? 
Yes, they are. Okay. <clears throat> um, are you doing intermittent fasting? Yes. <laughs> In fact, uh, I don't get hungry whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird. Okay. Do you feel okay? I feel fine. Yeah. Okay, so let me just give you I mean, my... I get tired every once in a while. Okay. Yeah, I'll, let me give you my two cents. Um, each body is different. Um, if, if you're down 100, I'm guessing you're, you probably have a more of a petite frame. Um, and so some people get pretty lean on this, but they feel great. So, and then they want to gain weight. So there's always this thing with other people like, oh, you got to gain weight. You gotta... The point is if you feel strong, that's the most important thing um, because you don't want to put on fat. You can start putting in muscle by exercising. I think that's what I would do. Um, but maybe if you, the problem is if you're not hungry, you're, you're running your body off of your own fat, which you might not have a lot of. So what I would do is I would increase the, the quantity of meal first, the, the calories in the meal. Eat, add more food when you eat. And then maybe try to add one more meal, but don't go crazy with it adding a lot of meal. So maybe you're just doing two meals. Um, I would also add more greens. But I think the fact that you're still a diabetic tells me that you need to support the pancreas because chances are you probably still have insulin resistance a little bit and what happens with that is you won't, it won't allow for the, the protein to go into the cell and so it would be hard to really you know, maintain more muscle mass. So uh, zinc and chromium are two trace minerals that I think would really, really help you. You can just probably do a trace mineral blend, a plant-based trace mineral that would help. But I would really focus on targeting that type 2 diabetes and supporting that as your primary goal versus just trying to gain weight. And then I think your weight will come back, um, but I would add the exercise in there. Now as far as the bread goes, there is a little bit of arrowroot. We have a new recipe to replace it just so you know. It's not exactly like it, but it's pretty darn close and I will be posting that shortly. But the amount of arrowroot that we're using is so tiny the amount of carb, carbs in arrowroot in that recipe are so small. You're talking like not even more than four, four grams of carbs, if that. And that's for the whole loaf. You're only going to eat like a little bit of it, right? So you're talking like probably one, one gram of carb. So right there, it's not going to be an issue. The benefit of the arrowroot just makes the bread awesome. So, but the point is that there is another, another recipe. So just, just do small amounts. I think people are taking that out of proportion a little bit. Um, but it's like trying to get your potassium out of the cream of tartar or whatever. Yeah. It's, 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 these things are used in, you know, a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon or something in an entire recipe. Yeah. So in an ideal scene, you're, <clears throat> even if you ate the entire loaf of bread, which you shouldn't in one sitting, that's a really small you know, compared to other things that people are doing, like eating rice and beans and pasta and real bread and, you know, cheat days and all of this stuff, you know. Thanks, Cynthia. Appreciate your question. Uh, now uh, we're going to go to Laura from Indiana. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hi, Dr. Berg. How are Hi. you? Great. I love your YouTube videos. Thank you. You're so helpful. Thank you so much for putting your videos out there. Sure. Um, I did a ketogenic diet now for about, well, it's been a little over a year, and I was successful. I did lose 35 pounds, but then I just kind of plateaued, and I wasn't able to lose any more. Um, I was diagnosed with spinal stenosis, and I do take Celebrex for that, and I'm also almost 49 years old, so I know I'm starting the, the perimenopausal phase. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering also, another thing I wanted to ask you about is the Atkins snacks, you know, like those bars or like the um, peanut caramel cluster bars, things like that. Are those a big no-no on keto? So question, are you doing intermittent fasting or not yet? I do two meals a day, mm -hmm. and I try not to snack, but on some days I am hungrier than other days, and I do have a snack here mm -hmm. and there, but okay. I try not to. Okay. So yeah, some of those uh, bars, you really have to look at the ingredients because the quality is so low. And I know they're convenient. Uh, you, either you find something with like that's really high quality or just make your own because that's what I'm going to recommend for that. Uh, I think the fact that you need a snack, I think you just need to uh, 
uh, tweak the eating, like your diet, what you eat in those two meals. Adding more greens, add a little more fat, so you don't snack. The snack is going to get you. It's going to uh, keep you from t lowering your, um, your weight, because you're going to plateau. The other thing with spinal stenosis, just so you know, uh, watch my video on that. If you take vitamin K2, that will actually help uh, some of the um, buildup of calcium on the inside of the spinal column and give you a little more space. You might want to try that out, um, and that'll help you. Okay? Okay, Karen, we have another question, the last question of the day, okay? Okay, someone's asking how old I am. Do we tell them? No. I, no. Karen, she's I just uh, had a 30. I just nine. had a birthday on she's Friday. She's 39. Looks pretty good for 39. <laughs> Yeah, she's 55 years old. I am. 55. I just turned 50. 55. Yeah, you don't look a day over 30. <laughs> good. You're good. Now, You're a um, good boy. Of course, I'm, I'm actually 35, but we won't talk about that. So what I want to do is I want to ask the last question. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so, to everyone. I'm not going to answer any questions because I'm going to ask oh, this question, and oh. then we'll go to you for a second. But the question is this. <laughs> okay. Karen, because you try to squeeze that in there. What is the first vitamin that was ever discovered? Mm. Type it down. Okay. Okay, type it down right now. What is the first vitamin that was ever discovered? What do you think, okay? We'll come back to that after I talk to Mohammed from Canada. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hi, Dr. Bird. how are you doing today? Hi, great, thanks. Yeah, thank you for the videos and for all the information that you give us. Uh, oh, my pleasure. Uh, my question is, my question is, I'm um, doing keto diet since December 15th, keto and intermittent fasting, and I lost the amount of uh, of weight and um, I'm feeling good about it. Uh, lately, I just felt like um, when I sit down and I get up suddenly, I have like kind of dizziness. Mm -hmm. For like for a few seconds, yeah, and um, just and that's something that I don't know what it's come from. Like I never, like I had this one long time before, like when I was younger, and now this come back again for some reason. I'm not sure what it is. Okay. There's... And the other thing, Go ahead. Uh, yeah. The other question is like, um, uh, I have a keto um, keto strips that I use mm -hmm. like to check my keto in in the urine. Yeah. I'm not sure, like sometimes positive, sometimes negative. I'm not sure is that like a good indicator or just that's something that you know I could, uh, I could have. Good. So uh, let me answer the strips first. Um, the keto strips are a good rough indicator, but it, they're not 100% accurate because you, when you start doing this, you're going to start to burn up these ketones more efficiently. And it's not going to show up in the urine. You're going to think, oh, I'm not in ketosis. Well, initially when you do it, the ketones are going to go through the urine and you're because you're not burning them. So because you're in strong ketosis, just all that means is there's ketones in the urine. It doesn't tell you how efficiently your system is. But uh, if your system is burning up all those ketones, it's not going to show up very much in the urine. Even though you're in hardcore ketosis, it's not the best indicator. So you'd want to go, the best thing is to measure your waist. And then the other question is that if you're getting dizzy, that could mean you need more salt, sea salt, because um, the volume of fluid uh, goes down with keto. When you're on sugar, you're carrying around at least another 11 pounds of fluid because the way sugar is stored is like a sponge, a fluid-filled sponge. So you lose all this stuff, water, you're in keto, and all of a sudden your volume of fluid goes down. You need more sea salt to maintain the volume of um, blood. Uh, so add that, and if that doesn't work, then you have to look at the adrenals because the adrenals could be weak, and then you can support that with some other videos. Thanks for your question. What kind of answer do we have, Karen? What kind of what are people saying? They can support it with some other videos. Is that what you meant to say? Support it with liquid videos. Yes. <laughs> like I know those questions are going to come up. I was actually, I was talking, but my mind was over here. With somewhere yeah. else. Okay. So hello to Canada. Hello to Nairobi. Um, and thank you for all the birthday wishes. Uh, good. So YouTube is pretty much coming in with vitamin A. We have C, vitamin C is the second biggest answer, a couple of Ds. Uh, and in on Facebook, uh, we've got a little more of a mix, some A, a lot of C. Okay. All right. Drum roll, please. <laughs> All right. The answer is vitamin A. Yeah, guess, and go guess ahead. what? Guess what the second one is, Karen? What's this? The second 
vitamin ever invented. Yeah, it was discovered. Vitamin, discovered, oh, discovered, not discovered, invented. Discovered. B. B. Okay, what the third one is? C. And the fourth one? D. Good. What's the first B vitamin ever discovered? B1. Good. Second? <laughs> I think we get B2, it. B2 and then B3. We get it. Yeah. Okay, I hear the music. All right, it's guys. Time. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks I for coming it. out. Um, we'll Planet talk to you Earth. next week. All Great right, to have see a great you guys. Weekend. Okay, bye.